Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Welcome into Culture Keys. I'm excited because over the next couple of weeks to finish out the year, we're going to be bringing to you some of the best of, most listened to, most commented on, those I've received the most testimonies in terms of their impact. And so if you missed them, you'll be able to catch up on them. And if you never got to, uh, to listen to them in the first place, uh, this will be new material. And if you got to hear them, well, it'll be a refresher that I believe will strengthen you. So be blessed, and we'll see you with fresh content starting in January. God bless you. Well, thank you for tuning in today. As always, I am excited, highly caffeinated, and ready to roll. Thank you for taking a, a little bit of time. And uh, whether you're listening in the car, in the office at home, maybe while you're taking a walk or spending some quiet time, wherever this finds you, I pray that it is a challenge to your life. And we've been in a series that I've entitled Train Till You Trust. And it really centers on our ability as leaders to delegate. How do we give it away? How do we prepare others um, to stand in their calling? How do we activate the gifts of the people around us by giving it away. And we've talked about the ministry of Christ as a model. Jesus came and his very first instinct was to immediately prepare others for partnership, prepare others to carry responsibility, to, to prepare others to do the things that he was doing currently so that they could go forward and, and in his words, I mean, he prophesied to his disciples, men, listen, you're going to do this greater, greater than I've ever done it. Greater things are you going to do. And, and I know Jesus felt confident in them being able to do greater things with greater fruit and greater uh, productivity because of the way he prepared them. And I want you to watch some things that I, that I see in the ministry of Christ that will aid us in this idea of training until we trust. Because most of the time in our lives, delegation is a trust problem. We're afraid to give it away because we know if we do it, it gets done and it gets done to our, uh, our level of excellence. We have trust issues when it comes to giving it away to others. Or maybe there's some immaturity or some pride and we're just not capable or have the courage to give it away today. But I want you to see some of the, the habits and practices that I see in the life of Christ in terms of this idea of delegation and activating the gifts of others. Because when I read the ministry of Christ, he routinely discovered the gift in other people. And I believe the call of spiritual leadership is just that, to discover the gift in the life of others and then to prepare them adequately to operate in that gift for the good of the entire body. But discovery is where it all begins. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is this, do we have the gift of sight? Can we see the gifts in the lives of those we've been called to lead. And if you're a pastor or leader of a team, you have to be intentional about this spirit of recognition, of recognizing the gifts that God sends to you to be a help and a strength. And yet, if we never discover those gifts in the lives of others, they'll sit in our congregations, maybe for months or, or, or years, Eventually, they'll go somewhere else because they're going to find a place to, uh, to exercise that gift. And we've never opened up the flower, so to speak. We, we've never capitalized because we didn't have the ability of discovery. And we need to pray for the gift of recognition and live with eyes that detect the potential in the people around us. And like a miner, begin to dig until we get it out. And so in my mind, there has to be intentional aquariums where the gift of others can be viewed up close, 
whether that's programs or groups or teams, that becomes an aquarium for you to view and study the life of the people up close that God's called you to lead, to lead. And you know, an aquarium is a place for viewing, a place for studying things up close and in their natural environment. And each of us as leaders have to, uh, identify where our discovery opportunities are. Where? Where am I watching and learning and inspecting uh, the lives of others in their natural environment? See, a lot of times we don't spend enough time with people or don't create enough opportunity outside of actual church services or what, whatever else it is where you truly uh, have an aquarium where you can view up close Um the gift that is in other people's lives. Where are your discovery opportunities? Where do you get to view and study the life of the people you're called to lead in a way that reveals the gift that's in them? What specific programs or meetings or services provide you with that best viewpoint? And identifying those places of opportunity is what focuses us so that we can make the discovery. And let me say this, there has to be those within an organization that are given the specific task of discovery. A discovery is certain, uh, is certainly something we talk about a ton here. It's a part of our buzzwords. But I've found that unless you task people with that specific obligation, opportunity of discovery, um, sometimes it doesn't get done. We have to determine who's responsible for this very important piece of the puzzle. Because I feel that too often we complain about not having enough help, enough servants, enough gifts, while at the same time we fail to recognize the gifts that God sent us. So you can't do both. You can't gripe about not having enough help and also not create opportunity where you're discovering the help or the gift that is in the life that God has sent you. So if no one's specifically tasked with discovering gifts, it's likely not happening. And so we have to think deeply about who's responsible. Certainly every leader should have a tiny bit of this responsibility. But in my heart, I just believe unless there are those specifically tasked with it, it's likely not to get done on the level that you hope that it will. So firstly, Jesus discovered the gift in others. Secondly, once that discovery was made, he was determined and dedicated to developing the gifts of others. And this is where that teaching and training takes place. This is that season of preparation that is so vital to others being successful uh, in what we've asked them to do or what God's called them to do. And too often we send people into opportunities for service but they're largely unprepared. And when you're unprepared, success is difficult and failure is made too easy. And when we send people into positions without preparation and they fail, they flame out and they quit. And we're once again holding the bag. And sometimes, uh, you know, we make judgments and blame the person who has failed and burned out and quit as being a bad person when the reality is the failure's ours, not theirs. It's a leadership problem. We just do not have the processes in place to fully develop people in a way that prepares them to function in the position you've called them to. And I think we've got to be very careful because God sends us these gifts alongside precious people who are waiting for their gifts to be discovered and then developed so that they might be placed into position and find purpose and fulfillment. And yet we, do, we don't have these apparatuses in place. And then thirdly, Jesus not only discovered and developed gifts, but he deployed the gifts of others. And this is that stage of release and empowerment that inspires and gives confidence for the tasks that you've assigned to them. Deploy is a military term, and when I looked it up um, in Webster's, it means to move troops or equipment into position for military action, 
man, that sounds like kingdom talk to me. Uh, that's exactly what spiritual leadership is for to move troops into position. I mean, come on, that's it. That's what we're doing. And that ought to inspire us, not cause us fear. Uh, that that to in, ought to inspire us, not challenge us and challenge our trust. But deploying is at the very heart of the gospel. Why? Because being sent is at the very heart of the gospel. Being sent is at the very heart of the gospel. Jesus was sent by the Father. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus. And now the Spirit sends us into the field as harvesters. We are a sent people on assignment in the earth. And this act of sending has to be at the heart of every leader in the body of Christ. Because the central message of Christ to his disciples was come and then go. <laughs> come and then go. And, um, you know, certainly he called them first to come. Come to me and drink. Come if you're weary. Come if you're heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Come and be healed. Come and be forgiven. <clears throat> and those who came received exactly what they needed. But watch, that's not where the journey ended that's where the journey began. Then they were prepared for partnership with the mission of Christ. And their message became like Christ's. Come and then go. Jesus compelled them first to come. But then he compelled them to go. Go into all the world. Go into the highways and byways. Go until everyone has heard. Go and find someone to serve. But the message was go. And this deployment was central to the early church's success. Everyone who came had to turn around and go. And I'd, I'd love it if that's the way um, we looked at our ministry. Right? Everyone that comes has to turn around and go. And so we become responsible then to preparing them to go. And the modern version of the church, I believe has been stuck on come, right? We just want people to come, 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 come and serve, come and do, come and be present, come and give. But to serve the cities where we've been planted, we have to move on to the place where we're preparing people with a real go in their hearts. We're compelling them uh, to get into partnership. Man, when you become a kingdom uh, servant, uh, you're given a kingdom franchise. <laughs> uh, you are now made responsible for kingdom business. And all of that responsibility has to come with preparation. And as leaders in the household of faith, in the body of Christ, in the organizations that we serve, we have got to get great at discovering and developing and deploying the gifts that God is sending. I'm going to take it up right here next time on Culture Keys.